just want to know if he's happy with how things turned out. It was December 27th, 2004. I was 14 years old. We didn't expect it at all. He had been calling my sister's phone trying to get my mum to talk to him. She was just like, I can't do this anymore, I can't, you know. After my mother left him for the last time, he went into a tailspin, of course. He used a noose that he had kept in the garage for a few years and kept on telling my mother he was going to use on her. It's textbook abusive manipulation. If you leave me, I'll kill myself. Nobody ever believed he would, um, and he did. My brother went home and, and found him. It's pretty nasty. My father was one of eight children and he used to watch his father drag his pregnant mother around the house by her hair. I mean, what are the odds that he was going to come out of that sort of childhood well balanced? I always thought maybe my dad smoking or drinking would kill him. I don't think I ever really witnessed what it was to have a healthy relationship with alcohol. Even though suicide's such a big thing and it, it was such a big turning point, it was all the circumstances that allowed for that to happen that are what's affected me the most. I always felt trapped at home. The fact that we couldn't open the blinds or the curtains because the neighbors would look at us. My parents were always really, really private about their lives because, you know, so much happens behind closed doors. Even the way that my dad would hit my mum, he'd always sort of do it below where clothes, you know, wouldn't show any bruises. He was definitely emotionally abusive. You know, you say it was walking around on eggshells, but it was way more than that. It, it was literally being terrified. When I had a cold sometimes, I'd be sick. And I'd be trying to stop myself from coughing because he'd be screaming with rage at the sound of it. I think I felt like he was always looking over my shoulder. I'd get into trouble at school and I'd immediately be having, you know, what I now know would be a panic attack, but thinking what's gonna happen to me when I get home. You had to always be so conscious of not setting him off. I just look back on it and I'm like, how ridiculous is any of that? Just after dad passed away, we moved. I spent every single day sleeping and every night awake, just trying to push away the last, you know, 14 years of my life and start over. I had really bad nightmares and I get sleep paralysis as well. It's pretty scary to be lying there. You can't move anything and you think that there's someone in your house coming up the stairs. I think I had some very twisted views on suicide just after it happened as well. My immediate response was to laugh. It was disbelief. Nothing makes sense in your head if you're at the point where you have committed to kill yourself. There's no bit of logic or reason I feel like I'm constantly treading water. I can't imagine being mad enough to throw a champagne glass at someone's head or put holes in walls and things like that, break things, but I have done that and it feels really alien. I think I've definitely got my father's short temper. There's a lot of him that I see in myself. I struggle with my mental health. And I think it is because so much of it is acting and pretending that everything's okay. 
I drink pretty much every day. It's sort of like a cycle, it, it feeds into itself. And then I hit a depressive sort of state, so I'll drink to make that feel a bit more numb. I don't consider my mental conditions to be genetic as much as I think of, yeah, I got this from my dad. And it sort of makes me think, well, I can't be down on myself for being so much like him. I know that it's something that it's gonna be with me for the rest of my life. You can't be a monster all the time. He was still my father. I, I can't hate him for the rest of my life because that's carrying around an anger that has no purpose. I had to make the choice for myself to forgive my father for what he did. And to forgive that, you can forgive anything.